Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your fatherly care towards us and the grace that you have given us in Christ Jesus. You've called us into your church and made us a part of the body of Christ. Our Heavenly Father, we praise and worship you and ask that you would be with us as we worship you this morning. Speak to us through your word, enlighten our hearts and minds, and call us to service of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. By your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and beginning to read at verse 1. Let us hear God's word. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now, to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Amen. May God bless this reading of his word. Good morning and a warm welcome again and a welcome to you on video if you're watching on YouTube. We are turning again to 1 Corinthians after our Easter break and uh, regaining uh, where we were in uh, 1 Corinthians and Paul is beginning to speak about spiritual things and about spiritual gifts. In the book of Revelation, John sees a vision of Christ risen and among the seven lampstands that represent the seven churches. Today, we are going to be thinking about and learning about the church, and I wanted to begin with this picture of Christ walking among his churches, reigning over them and working through them. Have that truth in mind that the church is the spiritual work of God as we think about this passage in 1 Corinthians. Now, about spiritual gifts, Paul writes, I do not want you to be ignorant. Paul is actually addressing things spiritual, not just spiritual gifts, though he will talk about gifts of the Spirit. He is addressing all spiritual work. He actually writes, now about the spiritual, I do not wish you to be ignorant. That is, God's work in us as well as God's work through us. Paul does not want us to be ignorant about the spiritual work of the church and God's spiritual work among us. In fact, he's already been writing to the Corinthians about that. He's already been telling them about how they celebrate the Lord's Supper, how they are to live, and how they are to think about their place in Christ. We are God's spiritual work. And for this work, God has gifted each one of us to help the others. For God is not only leading us to salvation in Christ, but he is also saving us, and he will save us when he returns. He has saved us in Christ, he is saving us, and he will save us. Everything in Christ and in his work upon the cross, as we've seen over Easter time. So Paul says, about things spiritual, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Somehow or other you were led into false 
spiritual things. This is Paul's starting point with them on spiritual things. They have always been involved in spiritual things. We all are, and we cannot help it. We are spiritual beings. We have a part of us that seeks God and wishes to know him, even if we do not. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God, Paul writes, says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He's helping them to decide how to discern between the false spiritual things that they once were involved in and the true spiritual things that they are now involved in. So we have to discern spiritual matters so that we follow God and not our own or false spiritual ways. To discern the right way, what think you of Christ? What does this philosophy or idea say about Christ? What does this teacher or leader or person say of Christ? Jesus is Lord is the one that we are looking for. But we are talking about spiritual things, not just words. We want to make Jesus Lord ourselves and must discern if the spirit of the teaching or the idea or the leader actually does make Jesus Lord and treat Jesus as Lord. Making Jesus Lord reign over our hearts and our lives. That is the marker, the trademark of the Spirit of God. So even if there are lots of gifts, there is only one Spirit that we look for, the Spirit who makes Jesus Lord. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Paul does speak on gifts here, but more than that. There are gifts, charismata, grace gift, or gift of grace. There are service, diakonia, service, help, action to assist. There are different kinds of working, and here the word is energema, operation, working, miracle. These together should be seen as covering all the ways that God may work among his people, work in us and through us. Don't worry about defining each differently or listing them as the only ways that God can work. They just cover all the ways that we might speak of God working with us and in us and through us. These kinds of things people think of as spiritual. But Paul's point is that they are not the spiritual thing. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the God, is the spiritual one. There is one Spirit, one Lord, one God. He is the spiritual thing to be looking for. And the many varied ways in which he can work in and through us are just that. They are ways that God may work with us. Gifts of grace, acts of service, powerful works. Our catch-all phrases to cover all the wonderful things that God does among his people. Now to each one, in verse 7, Paul says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To each one. Everyone has a share in the victory of Christ. Uh, the picture is given elsewhere in Scripture of Christ as the victor who leads in procession and gives the trophies of his victory to his people. And everyone has a share in Christ's victory. And that's a wonderful truth. Understand this. It's, it's a wonderful understanding of what our gifts and our callings are. They are shares in the triumph of Christ. Each one has a share in the victory, a uh, showing of his spirit to bless everyone else. The manifestation, that is, the revealing, the showing. This means it is the spirit who is showing himself in us. So it is the spirit showing his kindness for other people in us. Of the spirit, whatever is, it is that is given to you, given to you, so not yours, for others, not for you, and for the Spirit's purpose, not your purpose. And it is for the common good, 
So understand this, you don't have a gift and I don't have a gift. I have a gift for you and you have a gift for me. You and I are the delivery drivers. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes Christ Lord. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. He's the one you're looking for. Both are messages from God to others. And one is of wisdom and one is of knowledge. Wisdom is like wisdom in Proverbs, a way to understand. Knowledge is information. I have received many, many messages of wisdom and of knowledge through the years from many, many other Christians. Don't think there is some bolt out of the blue, thunderous voice from the sky kind of thing here. This is the common way in which God uses one Christian to help another. So are all the others that are listed here as examples of ways in which the Spirit may reach out through each one of us to help each other of us. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of tongues. Let's do this as quickly as Paul does. Faith is trust. Gifts of healing is not the power to heal, but individual acts of healing. Miraculous powers is exactly the same word as workings in verse 6 and is a catch-all for all the amazing ways that God can work in and through and among us. Prophecy is telling what God says and here is a catch-all for teaching and foretelling and forthtelling and preaching and all kinds of telling what God says. Distinguishing between spirits is exactly what Paul has guided us us about earlier, being able to tell if something makes Jesus Lord or it doesn't. Speaking in tongues is the ability to speak other languages, and interpretation is exactly that, translating into a language that others can understand. All these are work of the one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Here is the point, though. Although there are lots and lots of ways the Spirit may work among us and in us and through us, all these and more, it is the Spirit's work. He gifts them. He chooses who to gift them to and when and what for. We should not look for our gift, but to serve and follow Christ and listen to the Holy Spirit. He may ask us to do many, many different things, and give us many, many different gifts at different times to serve the body of Christ. Yet we are all in this together, and the Spirit does gift you with grace or help, help that you can give, or powerful blessing for the rest of us. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and the wallet's parts are many, they form one body, and so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Here is the first thing. We are all together in this, hand in hand together. Christianity is not a lonely game, something I need to learn. Christianity is not a lonely game. Christ did not die to save me alone. If there had only been one lost sheep, he would have gone for the one lost sheep, but we have kept him busier than that. He came for more than one. There were many of us lost sheep. He has saved us each in the same way and made us his own kingdom together, his reign in our hearts. We are on the same journey to his everlasting life. And for that journey and his work in us, he has given us grace gifts, gifts of grace and serving, acts of help that we can give and works to do. In fact, Ephesians tells us that he has prepared all those works in advance for us to do. God's sovereign grace plan is to save you and work through you to save others and lead others and help others and them to help you so that he builds his whole people together until he has us all before God as he desires. 
Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Everyone has a calling and gifts, but it would make no sense to give everyone the same calling and gift. To save all who will be saved and change us all in our hearts and in our minds, ready for the life to come for which we are being prepared, God in his sovereign grace planned gifts and calls us as we are needed for that work. Two things follow from that. You are needed. You are needed. You are gifted and called. You may or may not believe that, but it doesn't matter. It's true, so just accept it. You must show up, and you must do as he has given you to do. If you do not, someone loses. Probably not you, for your gifts were given for someone else. It is as if the body of Christ were harmed. That is the first thing which follows. We have to get on with the calling and gift given to us. Paul writes to Timothy and says, don't neglect the gift that was given you when the elders laid their hands on you. We are to get on with the calling and the work and the gifts, the acts of service and helping, and all the things that we can do for Christ. The second thing which follows from God gifting us each for the others and for his work is that not everyone will do or even should do the same thing as you. Other Christians don't have to do what you do, and you don't have to do what they do. We need different works and callings and gifts which other people have been given for us. They were given those gifts and callings for us. I am not meant to do those things. I am meant to do the things that I have been given to do. You are not meant to do the things I have been given to do. I am meant to do those things for you. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. God arranged them. God arranged us just as we are needed. He is wonderfully detailed, God. Think about the wide universe of stars and then the tiny universe of the atom. Then think of everything in between. Or think of the thoughts in your head, the air in the room, the air entering your lungs and moving in your body and brain and allowing your thinking. When God organizes something, it is very detailed, and so is the church. He wanted you now here. So here you are. But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Accept this. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Let the Lord decide who is best suited for what. Let the Lord decide. Be happy in doing whatever he calls you to do and focus on that. Encourage others in their own calling and gifts and thank them for doing them. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. You are. In those callings and gifts, Christ himself at work among his people by his Spirit. And so are all your brothers and sisters. You are the body of Christ, and you are a part in the body of Christ. So do your part. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, workers of miracles, and those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with a gift of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. There is a structure for the work of God, an order in which he places his work. First come those sent out, the apostles. Then come those who tell what God is telling, the prophets and the teachers. Then come those whose work, uh, who work great works for God. And then come those who bring healing. Then come those who help and assist, and those who administrate. And at the last comes those able to speak in other languages. Let me put that another way. First, God sends the gospel, those sent out. 
Then he confirms it and teaches more, the teachers. Then he works in varied and needed works of power to overcome obstacles and prove his blessing. And then he works in healing his people. And then God pours out through his people actions of help and assisting and administrating. And finally, he gives the ability to send out and take the gospel further into new places and among new peoples with new languages. And the work begins again. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? No. For sure, the desire, do desire to take part fully in the most exciting parts of God's great work. Seek to be sent out. Seek to be a teacher. Seek for obstacles. Ask for obstacles to remove and to remove them. By all means, seek it. The sentence here in verse 31 can be read like this. But you eagerly desire the greater gifts, and is followed by, now let me introduce you to a far more excellent way. We are gifted and called as Christ's people to serve one another, and God pours out the triumphs of Christ into our lives so we can use them to help one another. Eagerly desire, eagerly desire to be a teacher, to, to be one sent out and tell the gospel, eagerly desire to serve God in every way possible, but take the gift and the calling that you have been given and use it to its full. However great or small it seems to you, it is needed. It is needed. God has arranged it. So only you can at that moment do what you can do. But look not for the gift so much as for the Spirit. Listen to him and do as he says. And next time, we'll find a more excellent way to go than just seeking gifts. Even better than using all your gifts, there's an even more excellent thing to do. Let's pray. My loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've given us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for each other and the gifts that you've given to each other. We ask, Lord, that you would anoint us with your Holy Spirit and help us to make Christ Lord in our lives and serve him in every way with every gift and calling that you have given us. And to his name be all the glory. Amen.